Welcome to ECN Trade Daily Video. Before we begin, it should be noted that any advice is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Rob Clayton and thank you for joining me. On Friday, the US session was somewhat volatile after a disappointing US non-farm payrolls report which revealed an increase of just 194,000 jobs. In September, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported employment in the United States grew at a slower rate than expected in September after the release of the uh, non-farm payrolls missed a forecast of 490,000 and instead came in 194,000 jobs. On the positive side, though, the unemployment rate fell to a much lower point than economists forecasted. That was at 4.8%. That's the same level seen in 2016. August jobs reported were revised and up by 366,000 compared to the initial reading from the previous of 235,000. A bleaker labour picture could stall the US Federal Reserve as it prepares to slow its $120 billion per month bond buying program. Still, keep an eye on the US dollar. As you can see, the market is still holding above that 94 level and could eventually see the rise up towards around that 94.60 or maybe further to around 95.20 to 60 area. This on the flip side would see the euro drop further to the downside with the objective still holding around 113.50. However, for the start of the week, it could be a little bit quiet due to the fact that the markets in the US are closed in observance of Columbus Day. Nevertheless, the short squeeze up could give opportunity for those seeking to shorten the euro around that 116.10.65 area. So this just raises this up a little bit. So somewhere up around this region here before any reversal, nevertheless, from the weekly bias, still has tend a tendency to maybe weaken off towards the end of the week. We do have a few figures coming out this week. With many Fed speakers in the US, we've got retail sales in the US and also the FRMC monetary policy meeting minutes, which the market will be keeping a close watch on as well. Looking to the Australian dollar, well, after many attempts to the downside, first of all, seen around 71.70 and then 72.25, the rebound of the last four days ago has found a bit of momentum and now pushing through the 60 day moving average. With a little squeeze in play and no New York, you could see a rise beyond the uh, 73.20.30 where we are at the moment, just and looking towards 73.65 where I've outlined here before a rejection and then eventually see the market look back towards the support. As always, the market looks like it's got caught a little bit on the short side with a couple of the positive candles coming through, even though to the bias, to the bearish case, has strengthened the market and the RSI rebounding off the midway point from that rejection of 72.25. So all eyes for the start of this week to 73.25. Well, the dollar yen has pushed further towards that upside and now surging to a high of 112.80. In light of the current pattern and clearing that top side level, the market's looking now towards the resistance seen back in 2018, around 114. I'm not going to get too carried away with this move to the top side because as we've seen previously in the past, plummets of prices when the bears get a little bit in greater numbers and the bulls tend to get caught in a bull trap. And that's exactly what I'm expecting. So let's see if the market, when it gets closer towards a level of 113, 35, 45, see if we get a rejection. Looking at the pound, well, over the last two weeks, the market has pushed higher and now around that 136.70 level. In light of the pattern and with the US absent, we could see a bit more of a short squeeze. And that is looking towards the support level around one. 35.85 to hold and push in towards that resistance level around 137.15 figure and reassess from there. With this weakness of the yen, all the crosses are really uh, benefiting from that and even with CAD yen as the market pushes higher and now looks towards that top seen back in May, which is close to around 91. From there, we may see a rejection. The reason behind that is we are overbought 
and therefore could see eventually a market turnaround and catch the bulls off guard. It was a very violent session when it comes to gold on Friday. It stabbed at the highs and then rejected quite heavily and now focusing back on that trigger level, or the bear point, at 1,748. A move through there in the close of New York would see further risk towards the downside to 1,720 and reassess. A lot of the market's in a squeezing mode, and especially oil, as it now captures an $80 barrel handle, and therefore looks for a move maybe up to about $82 before turning around. But there is a bit of divergence here. Nevertheless, the market still remains somewhat caught short, and therefore the squeeze will likely start to the beginning this week. Well, that wraps it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, look out for the intro report. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.